My name is uh, Gunstein Skomdal. I'm working for Elkem. I'm uh, actually at Elkem uh, now, and uh, I'm gonna talk a bit later about some exciting stuff happening uh, here these days. But first, people, I, I want to talk about a revolution that is really changing our lives as we speak. This is uh, some of the most important enabling technologies for reaching many of our targets when it comes to CO2 emission reduction and so on. Uh, I'm of course talking about lithium-ion batteries. This extremely advanced and important piece of technology that has been filling our lives now for the last decades and are really entering into new and new fields. These batteries are mostly, you know, behind some some uh, some plastics, electronics. It's uh, it's not something we are, you know, handling every day like normal batteries, you know, where you have to change them and so on. Because lithium-ion batteries, they are they are hidden. They are part of the phone. They are part of the car. So, so let's uh, let's dig into them and look how they do look like and what's inside them. So, so this battery here, this is a lithium-ion battery. It's actually the battery that I'm using to driving every day. Oh, not this battery, uh, but a similar battery is what I have in my, my Nissan Leaf when I'm driving. Uh, and it's, it's very good. I've been driving it for many, many years now. And uh, the same goes for all the other EVs on the market. You have the e-Golf, popular car in Norway. Uh, the battery looks like this. You have the Tesla, of course, the well-known cylindrical shape. Um, but inside these batteries, they are more or less the same. They consist of the same materials, and that's what we're going to look at now. So, for as an example, I took this uh, module, I disassembled it. It uh, consists of four cells. Uh, so, in each cell is then yeah, looks like this and quite thin, and it consists of 37 really thin layers of some key components of a battery. So. Uh, Normally you say that the battery is four, maybe four main components. You have the anode, which is the negative side of the battery. Here, thin foil. And then you have the a separator, which you put then on top. And then finally you have a cathode, which you put on the top, which is the positive. And you have layers by layers of this. You, you put it in an encapsulated box or uh, bag. And then you fill it with an electrolyte, where the lithium ions then can move. And the lithium ion moves then back and forth between the anode and the cathode. So when you charge up your battery, you fill the anode. When you charge it out, you fill the cathode. And what makes lithium ions so fantastic is that this movement of lithium ions can happen more or less frictionless, without any degradation over time. So you can use it for thousands and thousands of cycles, and it will still deliver a lot of energy and power to you. So that's also what's making you know, this lithium-ion technology able to revolutionize so many aspects of our life. Because it can really last as long as a car or even longer. So what kind of materials then are, are really responsible for these uh, extremely efficient and, uh, and stable batteries? So it's, it's, the name is lithium-ion batteries, but actually lithium is only a very small part of what the battery consists of. So if you take it apart, you see that the, the casing is often aluminum uh, or maybe, maybe steel. Inside the casing, the cathode is then a thin, thin aluminum foil, which is coated by uh, a lithium, cobalt, nickel oxide layer, often some manganese, maybe aluminum also inside it. And this is also what we often hear about in the news, is the cathode, the cobalt, etc. But it's around, uh, you know, 25-30% of the battery. Uh, another very important part, and also my favorite part, is the anode. Uh, you don't hear that much about the anode, but I mean, it's still half the battery. And it consists of a copper foil, uh, and it's coated then with a thin, thin layer of tiny, tiny graphite particles. So just as an example, how are these produced, these foils? Well, you take... Um, a powder, so in this uh, case for the anode, a graphite powder. You mix it with some binders and uh, maybe water to make it into a paint, a slurry. This slurry is then casted on top of a thin, thin copper foil. And then it's dried and it's pressed to high density because you want to have a high 
energy density of your battery. And then you end up with something like that. You can coat both sides, right? And then you can do that on both the anode and the cathode. You stack it together, you enclose it, fill it with electrolyte, and you have a battery. And it's basically the same principle for these cylindrical batteries. Instead of stacking, you're just rolling. So it sounds simple, right? The process is maybe simple, but I mean, to get all these materials, to produce all the materials, and is, is quite a complicated process. And that's also why today you see that many of these materials and also the batteries, they are produced in just a few countries in the world where they're really specialized on this, mainly because they used to make the batteries for the electronics and they have now moved into also cars. But with the amount of lithium ion batteries, we will need to electrify the transport sector, to electrify the grid and so on. We can't really, we, we have to think much bigger than this. We can't just have factories a few central places in the world. We need to have these factories to make the batteries, to make the materials all over the world. It's going to be a so central piece of every country's uh, industry and technology development and to reach the targets on CO2 emissions in the years to come. So today, most of this is produced in Asia, in, in China, South Korea, Japan, and so on. Uh, you have a factory in, 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 in the US also producing batteries, but a lot is happening in China. And also the raw materials are more or less processed more in China. Uh, you have uh, cobalt mines, uh, you have heard about Congo, a few other places in the world you have that. Same with nickel, you have a few uh, countries in the world where you have most of the nickel coming from. Uh, copper also uh, a bit concentrated to certain regions in the world and graphite of course uh, I think more than 90% of all the graphite used in batteries are actually produced in China so as you see we are very dependent on just a few countries just for making our batteries and our materials uh, and yeah, I forgot to say lithium which is coming from South America uh, Australia is also kind of also very highly concentrated. So uh, from a European, from a Norwegian perspective, it's very important that we can take a larger part of this value chain, that we are not just importing all the materials and all the cells, that we can make them ourselves and get the competence, since it's going to become such an important part. So um, that's also uh, what we see happening. Cell manufacturers are moving their production to Europe, also to Norway. And uh, what is also interesting from a Norwegian perspective is to see that we have actually ver a lot of the important pieces of the puzzle to make you know, the whole value chain here. We have a lot of cheap renewable energy that we can use to make batteries and raw materials. And we have also a lot of raw materials in Norway. So we have aluminum, as you remember, an important part. We have more or less along the whole coast. Uh, we have copper. We have copper refinery uh, here in Kristiansand, actually where I'm standing, just a kilometer away from me. We, they produce cobalt, nickel, and copper in that factory, uh, Glencore Nickel Work. And then, of course, you have graphite and lithium. Uh, lithium we don't have in Norway, but we can import it. We have, it's in Finland you have it and other places. Uh, but graphite is something that we really have because Graphite is made of oil and, and, and it should be possible to make also graphite in Norway. So there's a lot of potential here and that's what I would like to talk a bit more about. How we in Elkem are thinking about making anode graphite in Norway. The future is electric. The demand for battery materials will grow more than 10 times towards 2030. This requires a change, from dirty to clean, from emissions-intensive production to a truly green industrial revolution. To supply this in a sustainable way, the next generation of batteries and battery materials must be better, greener and affordable. Harøya Industrial Park is one of the biggest industrial parks in Norway. Here, Elkem intends to establish the Northern Recharge Plant. Through an innovative production process and high degree of automation, we will efficiently produce competitive anode materials with high performance and reliable product quality. 
Electrification is a global megatrend across transport and stationary energy storage. We see great opportunities for specialized products. The future is electric. Let's make it happen. With advanced high-performance battery materials, with a green footprint from Elkem.